Also breaking tonight in a Kelly File exclusive. New fallout after an influential leader in the NAACP slams the only African-American Republican currently serving in the U.S. Senate. Reverend William Barber saying this about South Carolina Senator Tim Scott. Quote, a ventriloquist can always find a good dummy. And the extreme right wing down here in South Carolina finds a black guy to be senator and claims he's the first black senator since Reconstruction. And then he goes to Washington, D.C. and articulates the agenda of the Tea Party. Now in a Kelly Powell exclusive, Senator Scott is here to respond. Senator, good of you to be here. And I just want to tell you that the NAACP uh, has responded to us in part on these comments. Uh, just tonight before we came to air, I want to read you in part how they have responded. There is no apology. I'll start with that. They say, okay. speaking of Dr. Martin Luther King, that Dr. King emphasized love and justice rather than extremism. Unless we stand for justice, we cannot claim allegiance to or pay homage to Dr. King, period. In a state such as South Carolina, politicians, whether they be black or white, should not be echoing the position of the far right. So there you have it. You, you should not be <laughs> echoing, echoing that position, and the NAACP has pronounced it as such. Your thoughts? Uh, pretty remarkable and, and, and absolutely ridiculous. Here's what we should be thinking about, Megan. Think about the fact that since the last five and a half years, we've seen seven million more Americans fall into poverty. Instead of looking for an agenda of opportunity, we're, what we're hearing is baseless rhetoric about the same old things that have not worked so far. And so for him to attack me, it's as if if you have conservative principles, conservative ideas that actually work, why bother to even try those? We've had a 50-year war led by the government on poverty, and it hasn't taken those who are living in poverty out. As you walk through the restaurants, or if you ride the local bus, we find people that are trapped and stuck in poverty. And, and but, they say, but they say that's, the that's, that's the fault of the far right, and they, that's why they're going after you. But, I mean, and, and, and Megan, with the name calling, that you're a dummy, that you're yeah, a ventriloquist yeah. dummy because you believe in conservative positions. Well, I, I did almost flunk out of high school, so I certainly understand why people would have some kind of opinion that suggests that we're not as smart on the right. But here's what happened when you almost flunk, flunk out of high school. You, you meet a mentor, Chick-fil-A guy, who teaches that you can think out of, your way out of poverty. That, in fact, the best and brightest opportunities aren't found by looking for the government to bring it to you, but it's found by looking in the mirror and blaming yourself if you don't succeed. If you've been given the God-given talents and skills to work, work. And if you do so, this country rewards you with amazing opportunity, outstanding success, and what we should be preaching all over the country. I spoke at two HBCUs today. We should be preaching the fact that in this country, conservatism, free markets, and capitalism produces greater success, easier results than the government could ever do. We've well, why, never heard the government have, have a conversation about I'm short on time, but I want to ask you. Well, why well, The NAACP why? seems to stand up for the rights of African Americans, but only liberal ones. Well, that's the key. We're not talking any longer about standing up for the rights of, of a racial minority. We're now talking about finding a way to have a conversation about philosophical bigotry. This is a brand spanking new day because there is a major threat coming from the right. And it's not moving further to the right. It's actually having a conversation where we embrace people who are in need and in trouble. And we show people, as I was shown, the path forward using basic common sense principles that govern the actual economy. And that's where you create a job, you make more money, you make a profit, you can use that profit to create wealth. These are basic, simple principles that yeah. are taught every single day in the workforce. And well, we we're not seeing we that conversation, seen a, having the conversation. I haven't seen any apology. In fact, uh, this reverend was think on CNN by earlier. He did not apologize. The NAACP doubled yeah. down. Senator Scott, thanks for being here. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am.